A good late afternoon. Thanks for joining us. This is Sage and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. And there's no better way to wind down the day than with today's market close commentary. So in today's show, we'll take a look at the overall ASX 200's performance of the day and we'll also explore the gainers and losers. And we'll look at the details of the companies that were in the news today, like Newix, Qantas Airways, Sydney Airport, Cooper Energy and much more. And we'll also look at why Omni Bridgeway continued their losing streak for the third day. I will share some trending updates from the Asian markets in the last segment, along with a special report on cryptocurrencies. So let's dive straight in. And the Australian share market ended higher in a volatile trade on Monday, led by the strong rally in mining and energy stocks. The market gains were capped by selling in tech, realty and the financial stocks. And the weak global queues as well posed a concern about the impact of the Delta variant of the COVID-19 virus on economic growth. That also kept the investors sidelined. And the benchmark index ASX 200 ended higher by 0.25%. And during the day's trade, the index swung between gains and losses as a rally in material and energy stocks were capped by a sell-off in the tech and the A-REIT companies. On the COVID-19 front, fresh data showed that the daily infections remain high despite an acceleration in the vaccination rate. In the past 24 hours, New South Wales recorded 1,257 locally acquired COVID-19 cases and seven deaths. While Victoria's daily count surged to 473, the highest single day tally of the outbreak so far. And the latest vaccination figures show that 46.2% of adults have received two doses and 78.5% have had their first dose. Let's see how the sectoral indices perform today. And the market width indicating the overall strength was mixed with six of 11 sectors ending in the green zone. The A-REIT was the worst performer with 0.62% loss. It was followed by information technology sector with a 0.61% loss, which fell in line with the US counterpart NASDAQ composite. And among others, A-REIT financials, utilities and consumer staples also ended lower. And meanwhile, the energy sector was the biggest gainer of the day with 1% gains, expending the rally for the second day on rising crude oil prices. And the crude oil prices rose for the second session as concerns over the US supply after Hurricane Ida supported the market. Adding to it, expectations for higher demand also boosted the energy stocks. And the index heavyweights Woodside Petroleum, Santos, Oil Search, Worley were among the top gainers. The materials sector also continued a gaining streak for the second day even as iron ore prices softened over the weekend. Iron ore prices dropped significantly from May record highs of 230 US dollars a tonne to just 129 US dollars per tonne after China curbed the steel production. And the index heavyweights BHP and Fortescue Metals ended higher while Rio Tinto settled marginally lower. In the banking space, all the big four lenders, Westpac, ANZ Bank and Commonwealth Bank, as well as NAB, ended in the red. Let's take a look at the top gainers and losers of the day. The top gainer on the ASX pack was Lithium Miner Pilbara Minerals with a 6.8% gain. Some of the other notable gainers were mining company Linus Rare Earths, gold miner Silver Lake Resources, Sydney Airport and healthcare firm Polynovo. On the flip side, Australian law firm Omni Bridgeway emerged as a top loser for the third session by falling 4.8%. The litigation firm was followed by online retailer Redbubble, gold miner Chalice Mining, shopping centres operator Uni Balrodemco Westfield and investment management firm Magellan Financials. Well now let's take a very small break but stay tuned on Calcane TV. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV.
Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Sage here and you're watching the market closing commentary in our last trade show by Calkine TV. Let's now shift our lens onto the stocks that grab the attention today. And the first news comes in from Legacy Minerals Holdings that made a strong debut on the ASX, gaining as much as 22.5% in the opening deals. The stock price rose to 24.5 cents apiece against an offer price of 20 cents. And the mining company successfully raised 5.8 million Australian dollars by issuing around 29 million shares in its IPO. The company is in the business of acquisition, exploration, development of tenements with high mineral prospectivity. And let's move on to the next. Shares of global software company Newix rose as much as 3.4% on acquisition news. And the company has entered into an agreement to acquire all the shares of the Boston-based software firm Topos Labs. Topos is a developer of natural language processing software that helps computer systems better understand text and spoken words at speed and scale. The deal will help Newix to boost the unstructured data processing power of its Newix engine. Also making the news, shares of the Australian law firm Omni Bridgeway continued their losing streak for the third day after an unfavourable ruling in Wivenhoe floods case. The share price of the litigation funding company topped the losers' charts by falling 4.4%. The company said in an exchange filing on Thursday that a target of its Wivenhoe Dam floods case was found not liable in a court decision. The Supreme Court of New South Wales Court of Appeal found the remaining defendant, Sickwater, not liable to the group members in the Brisbane Floods class action. And moving on, shares of Qantas Airways dropped as much as 2.2% in the intraday after the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission squashed its alliance with Japan Airlines. The watchdog denied authorisation for coordinated flights between Australia and Japan, citing that the agreement would make it very difficult for other airlines to operate on these routes. Next up, shares of Sydney Airport jumped as much as 5.5% on a takeover bid offer. The only listed Australian airport operator has received revised bids from a consortium of infrastructure investors valued at around 23.6 billion Australian dollars. The company has granted due diligence to the Sydney Aviation Alliance, a consortium led by IFM, after it upgraded its takeover offer for the company. And also in the investors' eyes was shares of telecom infrastructure provider Chorus that tumbled as much as 3.5% after the stock turned ex-dividend today. The ex-dividend date, also known as the reinvestment date, is the day when the company's shares start trading without the value of its next dividend payment. And the New Zealand-based company in its annual earnings report announced to pay a final dividend of 14.5 cents per share, fully imputed on 12 October 2021. The record date for the dividend distribution is 14th September. Let's move on to the next. The Aussie oil and gas explorer and developer Red Sky Energy reported its shares surged 12.5% after it received a green light to begin slick line operations at the Killanoola oil project located in the Panola Trough in South Australia. And on that note, we just need to take a very small break. We'll be right back. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Calkine's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Calkine TV. Hello and welcome back. This is Sage. You're watching the market closing commentary in the last trade show by Calcine TV. And let's look at some more of those stocks that grab the attention today. 
Pharma company Acrux informed its shareholders this morning that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has accepted for review the abbreviated new drug application for its generic version of Dapsone gel. The product is used to treat acne, which helps decrease the number of severity of acne pimples and to heal more quickly. And next up, shares of the oil and gas producer Cooper Energy rose over 2% after it entered into an agreement with AGL Energy. And under the agreement, Cooper Energy will supply all developed and uncontracted volumes from Casino, Henry and Netherby Fields in the Otway Basin. And let's now take a look at the next automotive aftercare and accessories company AMA Group saw its shares rising nearly 5%. The stock got a boost after the company successfully completed the institutional component of its fully underwritten entitlement offer, as well as the pricing of the 50 million Australian dollar offering of senior unsecured convertible notes. And the last stock in this list is Australia's largest real estate investment trust, Waypoint REIT. Shares fell over 1%. The petrol station owner is reportedly in talks with investors to issue a new Australian dollar bond for seven years to pay a margin of 155 basis points over swap. Westpac and National Australia Bank will jointly lead the offer. And on our next segment, we'll take a look east towards the Asian market performance. And shares in the Asia-Pacific region started the week on a bearish note, barring China, following the weak leads from the Wall Street region and the caution prevailed in the market ahead of slews of US and Chinese economic data and the launch of Apple's latest iPhones later this week. The Hang Seng Index was the worst performer in the region with nearly 2% losses led by sharp falls in Hong Kong's listed Chinese tech shares such as Alibaba, Tencent and Meituan. Shares of Alibaba fell over 3% amid the report that Beijing mulls to break up Ant Group's Alipay and forced the company to create a separate loans app. And meanwhile, mainland Chinese stocks were trading mixed with the Shanghai Composite up 0.1%, while the Shenzhen component dropped 0.50%. And meanwhile, Japanese market Nikkei 225 fell 0.3% as investors resorted to profit booking after the recent rally. And the index rallied for the seven out of last nine sessions amid optimism that the new prime minister will increase stimulus spending. Earlier this month, Japanese PM Yoshihide Suga announced to step down from the office by the end of September. In a similar trend, South Korea's Kospi dropped. 0.3% in the Straits Times and Singapore declined nearly 1%. Indonesia's Jakarta Composite traded lower by 0.6%. Thailand's SET Composite fell 0.2% and Taiwan's Weighted Index slipped as well 0.15%. India's BSE Sensex also traded lower by 0.4% in the opening deals, tracking weak cues from the Asian peers. Let's move on now to the US and Wall Street's main indices ended in the red on Friday as investors weighed signs of higher inflation. The sell-off on the tech giant Apple Inc. following an unfavorable court ruling related to its app store also dragged the market lower. And the Dow Jones dropped 0.78% while the S&P 500 tumbled 0.77%. The tech-heavy Nasdaq composite closed lower by 0.87%. And it's time for another small break. Please stay tuned on Calkine TV. Hi, I'm Sage, and get ready to take the crypto ride with me on Calkine TV. Watch the crypto buzz every Tuesday and join the excitement at Calkine TV from Bitcoins to NFTs to Dogecoin and DeFi. We have updates about everything around these digital currencies. Understand the investing rationale and the risks involved in the space with me, Sage, on Crypto Buzz. Keep watching Calkine TV. Welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us. This is Sage and you're watching the market closing commentary in the last trade show for Calkine TV. And we have reached the last leg of the show and in this segment we'll take a look at the crypto market's performance. And the major cryptocurrencies were trading lower on Monday as a rise in the regulatory scrutiny as well as environmental concerns kept investors sidelined. The market sentiment was also dampened after Sweden's central bank governor warned that Bitcoin could eventually collapse 
Adding to the woes, the US officials are reportedly discussing launching a formal review into whether digital coins threaten financial stability. And the price of Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market cap, was currently 2% lower. The most popular currency has dropped nearly 14% in the last one week amid a slew of negative news. Ether, however, the world's second largest crypto, was also down 2%. And Cardano, the third largest cryptocurrency by market cap, tumbled 6%, while Dogecoin prices slipped over 1%. And among others, the price of Solana, Tether, XRP, Stellar, Uniswap and Binance Coin were also all flushing in the red. And thanks for joining us on that report. That's a wrap in the last trade show. Hope you found our market closing commentary informative. My colleague Rachel will see you tomorrow at 9.30 in the morning and she'll bring to you the first show of the day, the pre-market open. And I'm Sage.